Okay, at this time, we want to remember the Lord's death for our sins. He commanded his followers to do so when at the last Passover with his disciples, he gave them bread to eat and the fruit of the vine to drink. And he explained to them that these elements were symbols of his body and his blood. We will prepare our thinking this morning of uh, this remembrance by looking at a passage of scripture found in Luke chapter 10. And I'd like for you to follow along. Uh, if you do not have a Bible, raise your hand and one of the men will hand you one. And if you don't own a Bible, you may keep this one. We're going to begin our meditation by looking at an occasion when Jesus visited the home of two sisters in Bethany, which was not too far from Jerusalem. One was named Mary and the other Martha. We find this story at the end of Luke chapter 10. Follow along as I read Luke chapter 10, uh, verses 38 through 42. <clears throat> now, as they were traveling along, he entered a village and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister called Mary who was seated at the Lord's feet listening to his word. But Martha was distracted with all her preparations. And she came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the serving alone? Then tell her to help me. But the Lord answered and said to Martha, 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 you are worried and bothered about so many things, but only one thing is necessary. For Mary has chosen the good part which shall not be taken away from her. <clears throat> In this scene, we catch a glimpse of the personality of these two sisters. Martha is the welcoming host who keeps busy with preparations. Mary is more retiring. She uh, sits at Jesus' feet to listen to his word from the mouth of the Lord Jesus himself. The text describes Martha as distracted in her serving. What, what is she distracted from? Well, apparently from listening to Jesus, listening to his word, giving attention to the word of God. It's not that the Serving is not important, but it's if it becomes worrisome and bothersome to the point that you're distracted and do not take in the word of God, then it is a problem. And Martha, Mary chose the good part, which she will not lose. She, uh, the, the lesson we have here is that giving attention to the word of God or on the opposite side, being distracted by many things is cheating us from the lasting things, the things that will last forever. Now what we, now, now what this, what does this have to do with our communion service? Well, let's fast forward to the week before Jesus was crucified and uh, you can look at this if you want to in John chapter 12, the first part, the verses 1 through 8. But it, this is also found in Mark 14 and in Matthew 26. It's kind of interesting that only Luke records that story that I just read. But the other three Gospels all record this one that we're going to think about right now. In this case, Jesus and his disciples returned to Bethany. And by the way, this is after Jesus had been there and raised Lazarus from the dead. And Martha is again serving. This is at a dinner in the house of Simon the leper. And what is Mary doing? She is worshiping. She has brought a pound of very costly perfume and poured it on Jesus' head according to Matthew and Mark. Then she anointed his feet with this oil, according to John, and the fragrance filled the house. The disciples were indignant with Mary and, and asked, why this waste? And Matthew says, uh, that, or that's what Matthew and Mark say, but 
Uh, John says that Judas objected for a more nefarious reason. He was a money, he kept the money box for the disciples, and under the guise of collect of selling that and collecting the money for the poor, uh, he would pilfer from that box. So Jesus told his disciples to leave Mary alone. She has done a good deed, and she was preparing Jesus' body for burial. Evidently, Mary's attention to God's word as she listened to Jesus made her realize that Jesus was going to die for her sins, that his burial was coming, that he would be leaving them. She seemed to understand more than the, the disciples because Jesus clearly explained, I'm going to Jerusalem to die, and uh, they didn't understand it. Mary seemed to have a grasp of it. It's kind of interesting that Jesus says, wherever this gospel is preached, what this woman has done will be proclaimed also. So we're doing that now. Mary realized that she would not, that he wouldn't be with her much longer, and she did what she could. She was looking forward to the death of Christ for her sins. You and I look back to the death of Christ for our sins. We're going to spend the next few moments in meditation on what Christ's death means for us. When Jesus died on the cross, he was dying for people who were unworthy of God's favor. In fact, Jesus knew how repulsive our sins were to a holy God, and he willingly bore the penalty, the whole penalty, for all of the sins of those who would believe on him. It was God's love for us that moved him to save us, or to, to move him to send his son to die on the cross. And believer, if you have been uh, brought into a saving relation, if you have, and you have, if you're a believer, been brought into a saving relationship with Christ. He loves you as much now as he did when he first saved you. It, that love is continuing. It, it does not stop. This is a time for us to worship the one who brought us out of our hopeless state into the glory and grace of his love. It's also a time for us to examine ourselves as we Turn, and to turn from any sin for which Jesus paid such a high price. He suffered by being forsaken by his Father, and he bore our sins in his body on the cross. He paid the penalty for our sin when he shed his blood and gave up his spirit to the Father. He rose from the dead, and he ever lives to make intercession for us. He has promised to be with us to the end of the age. He has given us hope as we look forward to his return to take us to be with him forever. And if you're here this morning and have never come to the trust of Christ wholly for your salvation, if you are relying on your own goodness or the, the good things that you can do, you are missing the point of Jesus coming into the world. Your own goodness is not good enough in God's sight. This the only good that God can accept is the goodness of his son, which is perfect goodness. And you can do nothing to make yourself presentable to God. You must have the goodness of Christ imputed to you in order to be acceptable with God. The death of Christ has fulfilled God's purpose to put our sins upon his son, his sinless son, and to impute Christ's righteousness to us who are the unworthy, guilty sinners. He made him who knew no sin to be sin in our place so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Only God can save people and only those who realize their need and their dependence and trust in his son are those whom he saves. Mary, uh, many of God's own people the Jewish people did not receive him when he was here on the earth, and many still don't today. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. We're now going to spend a few moments of quiet meditation on, on these things and uh, 
after we've had some time, I will return and we will have prayer together.